Hello guys, welcome to Let Me Teach You. This is not the usual video, uh, this is a spontaneous one, just because I wanted to explain you something that I told you in one of the first videos, but I didn't really explain well. I remember that I, I had to write down a couple of words in phonetic transcription, and I, I did, but in one case I used square brackets on the sides, of the words. In another case, I used slashes or oblique strokes, as you want to call them. There is a difference, of course. In that moment, I told you it was not really important. I'm not gonna explain you now why I sometimes use square brackets, sometimes slash bars. For the moment, just take it as the same thing. Maybe we have to explain that now. Before I start explaining that, I'd like to ask you a simple question. If you take a, a word, like, I mean, a simple one, like sin in English, and I ask you, how many sounds do we have in that word? What would you answer? Most probably the answer will be three sounds, which is not really the right answer, but there is an explanation if you give that answer. The thing is that when you speak a language, when you say words, uh, you don't have just single sounds that you pronounce. You have a something like a sound flow. Physically seen, there is no border between a sound and another one. We draw these borders in our minds because we need to classify, to identify single sounds as units for our language. But this is just a mental thing, not a physical one. And in fact, I think the answer for you would be that this word has these three sounds like s, e, m, sin. That we don't have single sounds, it's also possible to understand that because if you take a, like maybe a longer sentence, something like, I don't know, I speak English, and you hear the same sentence in reverse. While in the case of the normal sentence, I speak English, if you count the sounds, you could you can also count the sounds, you can isolate them and say, okay, we, we have these sounds in these three words. You cannot do the same in the reverse version. And this is just because those sounds don't really exist. You can isolate, you can spot them when you understand what people are saying. But if you, for example, if, you, if you're hearing a new language, someone speaking a, a language that you don't know, you cannot quantify, you cannot count the sounds you have. So we can say that each single word has an infinite number of sounds. This is the answer. But then why did we answer three sounds in the case of sin? Because we have these sound units we were talking about and that are called phones. When you have the word sin, you have different moments when you pronounce the sound that are maybe slightly different from each other. Not really, you cannot really perceive the difference with your ear, but there are moments in these sounds. So we can say that s, e, and m are bunches of sounds that you identify as just one sound, as just one phone. Phone is a Greek word. It means voice or sound, and it's just a smallest unit you have in phonetics that you have to use together to build words. So in case you want to make a phonetic transcription or if you want to be more accurate, we have to say a narrow transcription. Then you will write sin with the three symbols of the international phonetic alphabet and on the two sides you have squared brackets. That is the phonetic transcription or narrow phonetic transcriptions. That means that we have a symbol for each specific phone, for each specific sound. If you change something like one millimeter, you put the tongue a little bit higher or, I don't know, if you open a little bit the vowel, then you have another phone and another symbol. So this is very important. Usually when we make phonetic transcriptions we use squared brackets. Now let's take two other words. Empathy and emphasis. In both words 
we have the same sound, we can say sound, which is the second one. We would say m. Or most of the English speakers perceive that as the same sound, but it's not the same phone, we can say, because in the first case, if you say the word slower, you will see that in empathy, the nasal consonant m is bilabial. So you put the two lips together, m, empathy. When you say emphasis, you put the upper teeth on the lower lip, m, emphasis, emphasis, which is different from m. You have m and m. It's just a slight difference that we don't really perceive if we're not used to work on phonetics. But it's a, a difference that exists and that can be very important in another language. So you should have two different phones and two different phonetic symbols. And in fact, you have. You have one symbol for the bilabial sound and one symbol for the labial dental sound. But as these two sounds are not really different for the ear of an English speaker, which means that you cannot create two different words just changing that sound like you do with make and take m mm and t are two different sounds because you can create two different words but you cannot do the same with m mm and m mm. you slightly change the sound just because it just depends on the sounds that surround the sounds we are talking about uh, so as in the first word empathy after the letter M, you have a bilabial plosive, P. So, M is also bilabial. In the second case of emphasis, you have the F sound afterwards, which is labial dental. And for a mechanism of assimilation, the nasal sound becomes as well labial dental. So it becomes M, emphasis. In this case, we can say that we have two different phones, m and m, but we have the same phoneme. A phoneme is a unit of sound that people can use to build new words, even if they can have different shapes, different sounds, different forms, but it's just a unit with variants that can be used as a single one to build new words. You can do that, for example, with make and take. So m and t are two different phonemes. You cannot do that with m and m. So m and m are not two different phonemes, They're just two different sounds and two versions of the same phoneme. Sometimes we don't really need to write a phonetic, a narrow phonetic transcription. So we talk about a broad phonetic transcription or a phonemic transcription. In this case, we don't use square brackets, but we use slashes or oblique strokes. In this case, we can say that m, the labial dental sound, is not the same phone as m, the bilabial one. m and m are the same phoneme. And you can also say that m, the labial dental one, is an allophone of m, which is a version of the same sound that you have in specific contexts. So now that we understood what the difference is between the two transcriptions, narrow and broad one, or phonetic and phonemic ones, and now that we know that we use square brackets for the first one and slashes for the second one, let's try to understand why we need both. Actually, a phonetic, a narrow phonetic transcription is very useful if you want to make a thorough analysis of, a, of the sounds of a language, or if you want to compare the sounds of two different languages that have two different phonetic systems. For example, if you take the English t sound, like in take, that is a, an alveolar sound. You pronounce it in a specific place of articulation that is above the upper teeth. This is not the same in Italian. In Italian, when we say tutto, for example, we put the tip of the tongue not on the alveolar ridge, but on the upper teeth. We say t. So in English it's t. In Italian it's t. It's a slight difference that you can hear when you have to learn a new language. For example, for the Italian people that will always 
will very often say, I take, uh, they don't say I take. And uh, so it's important if you have to learn a new language, a new phonetic system, if you want to compare languages, this is very important. But it's not always important. Sometimes we just need a phonemic transcription. If you take an English dictionary, then you, you really need a phonemic transcription because you see that English is a language where the orthography doesn't really match with the sounds of the language. You, you can have the same word pronounced in two different ways and you cannot really be sure how a word, a new word is pronounced just reading the, the word in a book. So that's why you need a transcription, always need a transcription. So if, if, you, if you are learning English and you want to understand the difference between live and live, you can just use a phonemic transcription. But there are other languages, just take my language, Italian. Uh, sometimes we need phonemic transcription because sometimes you have some doubts about like uh, the accent of a word or things like that, but not so many like in English. But if you take a language like Esperanto, in Esperanto, the way you write a word just gives you the sounds of the word. You cannot think that the word is pronounced another way. It's just like that. The accent is always in the second to last syllable and uh, each single letter corresponds to a sound. So you, you, you have no problems and you don't really need a phonemic transcription. Now let's take another word in English just to try to understand even better what the importance is to distinguish between narrow and broad phonetic transcription. If you take the word pain, the phonemic transcription is very often different from the phonetic one. In the phonemic transcription, you just isolate the single sound that you hear that you need to create that word, to build that word. And it's, it's just four sounds. P, E, E, N, which is not true. So, uh, and I will tell you why, because if you, if you write the phonemic transcription, you just need these four single symbols. But if you write the phonetic transcription, you, if, you, if you pay attention, every time English speakers say the word pain, they also add a glottal sound after P. So they, they don't say pain, like an Italian would say, because we don't have this uh, thing, but uh, they say pain. So you, you add a sound that you almost don't hear. It's not something that belongs to those units we need to build words, because you cannot have a difference between one word, pain, and another word, a different word, pain, without that H, <laughs> that glottal sound. So in that case, that that glottal sound is a phone. It exists. You can hear that if you pay attention, but it's not a phoneme. In English, for example, you have the sound n and the sound n. So the dental one and the velar one, that are two different phonemes. In fact, you can say sin, like we said before, or you can say I sing, I'm singing. In that case, you have two different phones, two different phonemes in English. That's not like that in Italian, because in Italian, these two sounds n and n do exist as two different phones, but n, the velar one, is just an allophone of n. When there is, a, for example, a velar sound after the nasal one, for example, if you say lingua, language, then you have the velar sound. When you say dente, tooth, then you have the dental sound. In that case, in Italian, N and N are two different phones, but not two different phonemes. So in the broad phonetic transcription, you will use the same symbol for dente and lingua. So we explained when we use square brackets, when we use oblique strokes, sometimes you can also have angle brackets that has nothing to do with the phonetics. This is just the way we write a word in the orthography. For example, if you want to say that in English, you can use the word un, un, no matter how you pronounce that, but just un to give the opposite of a word, like in unbreakable, unbearable, and so on, then you can write that part of a word 
that prefix are using angle brackets. So now that you know why we use different kinds of transcriptions, I, I hope it will be easier to follow my next videos when you see the phonetic transcription. And please tell me if you liked the video, if you learned something, if you need explanations, whatever you want, just write in the comments what you think. And don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click on the bell icon to follow my channel. So that's it for the moment. See you and behave yourselves.